We are getting ready to start a new project here. This one's going to be, uh, going to be quite a bit different. I'm going to try to talk a little louder so you can hear me. As you notice right here behind me, uh, under the clock here, that all my, my tools are missing. Well, those are the tools I use, it, my, use the most. So I, I came across the uh, brilliant deduction here that I needed a tool caddy, something where I didn't have to reach across the lathe to get my tools. Now, when I first started turning about three years ago, I had a, I started off with a Harbor Freight lathe, which I recommend everybody start with something really cheap to make sure they like what they're doing. It was a very good lathe for about $300. Anyway, it's a lot smaller, it's about at least, at least half or less than the size of this one. But it sit over here a lot closer, so reaching my tools was not a problem. But when I bought this one, it has like an 18 inch banjo, and I had to move my dust collector here, so it ended up being over here, it looked about all two, two and a half feet, maybe even three feet in the wall, which causes me to have to reach across things to get my, my tools. And so, you know, I developed the habit of turning it off every time, but I'm just thinking about, you know, there's an accident waiting here, one of my grandsons or me or something, we're going to forget to turn it off, and we're going to have a loose shirt, we're going to come over here, and we're going to reach across here to get a tool, and it's going to catch our shirt, and we're going to be in deep doo-doo. So, uh, and I decided... Yeah, I better do something about it. So I took, and my, I took, and my original plan was to make one that would sit over there on rollers that would be about this high all together. time I got the pedestal and the rollers and all that kind of stuff, I could just roll it right here and have it in the way. So I went out back and I got a 28-inch uh, white oak log, 18 inches in diameter, and I, I drilled holes in the end, and I put her up there, and I commenced to turn it. And uh, you know, it, it went real good, and it was a lot of turning. I got a 10-gallon bucket right there, and I emptied it four times. That's how many uh, shavings I had. So then I, you know, I got it all done. I looked at it, looked at it, and I said, well, I just didn't like it, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure everybody's done things that they just didn't like. There's something about it just didn't feel right, so... I basically abandoned that. What I did is I cut it in half and I made two caddies out of it. And one is for the tools. And I put on Lazy Susan and it sits right here. And I'm going to show it to you. And the other half, I, I've got to get another Lazy Susan. And I put things in it. Well, let me show you. Let me get down here where you can see a little bit more gooder. There you go. Now, see, there's the tool caddy right here. I put it right here on this table and it's on the lazy screw and it's screwed down. It's not going anywhere. The beaver's in the center. It ain't stuck. And I can get my other tools nice and easy, put them back nice and easy. And I took the other half of it and I've got, I'm going to put this on a lazy screw too. I just don't have one. And I put things in here that generally get all sort of lost in drawers and stuff like, you know, the keys to the chucks and, and you know, the different awls and stuff like that and punch. And then I put my Jacob's chuck. And I got, I got a lot more room here, so as I come across things, you know, I'll, I'll drill me another hole and put them in here. They're just pair of pliers. I use them quite frequently. thought about making a place to put the CA glue, like sit it right here and keep it out of the way. I don't know. I'm thinking, still thinking about that. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to make this thing. All right. That's white oak. It's 28 inches long, man. Thick. And yes, before you ask, I put that up there by myself. Uh, both ends are drilled. This one's quite a bit deeper for the uh, drive chuck, drive center rather, and uh, the dead center has to drill too. And I know it's bad out of balance, trust me on that one. I've got to pour over it up. And there we are. About 2.30. That's about the most right there. And that's 281.
hell did that get like that? Look at that. Come on. Still a pretty heavy piece of wood. All right, break time, guys. Let's sweep up some of these uh, shavings in here. That they get, they're about six inches deep. I have removed a lot of wood. Okay. I think I got this figured out. Uh, I told people I didn't mark things, but I marked this one. It's just as a guidance. I don't mean it ends up like that. First thing is I'm not going to put it on a face plate. It seems to be doing quite well the way it is. And uh, I'm not going to be doing anything up here anyway other than drilling holes. And I can't do it on here. I might do that on the drill press. And the center will be uh, a hole. And that's my beaver will sit in the center. Okay, this is going to be the, the, the top shelf here. And this will be a uh, shelf here. Now what happens, what's going to happen is this is going to come in here like this. And it may go all the way around. And this, this hole up here at the top will be big enough to accommodate this. And then down at the bottom, there'll be like an indention or something sitting, sitting down here just so they'll stay in place. And I don't know how many is going to be able to go around here. I'm going to put as many as I can you know, without the wood coming all apart. Um, really, the only, the only thing I care about here is tools that I use a lot. Ones I very seldom use, like, you know, I can make them over there. I'll probably use that wall for something else. So that's that's the plan for the actual tools. Now, my initial plan was I was hoping to get you know, like two layers of tools, but I see that's impossible. So what I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to make a shelf here and a shelf here, or just putting like you know putting uh, chucks on or something. So, and this this will come down uh, about three inches and then taper in, and this will be parted down three, and that will be parted three just. And in this shelf, I have like a little lip inside to keep stuff from falling out. So that's that's the basic plan. Well, here it is, all turned. I sort of wish I'd have made this center spindle a little smaller, but you know, it's going it's going to be covered with tools, and you know, I, I got to remind myself what the purpose of this is. You know, it's not something that's going to be in anybody's house. It's going to be out here in this whole shop. So that's it. It's all sealed and everything. Next step is to take it off and you know, finish cleaning this off right here and. Uh, also, right here, 
what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drill a hole right in the center and my beaver will go there. Of course, it's all going to be sanded first. But i got to fill that with something or the forester bit won't, won't hang in there. It'll try to walk all over the place. So that's no big deal there. Well, there it is. I don't like it. So anyway, what I did is I took it in here. I was getting ready to drill my hole on top for the tool, so I took it in here to the drill press. And I was going to use a drill press. Here it is. And you can see it's a regular, you know, standing drill press, but I didn't realize it wouldn't fit. I mean, I could take the tray off down there and, and you know, put something under it to make it fit, but that's more trouble than it's worth. So then, Came back and I said, well, I'll just drill the holes by hand. So I got my forester bits out and everything. Put down the floor and started drilling it by hand. And, and then after about twisted my hand off a couple of times, I said, screw this crap. And I started thinking, well, what are you doing, Larry? Well, I think I was trying to get to a result I had in my head without really thinking it through. I mean, the first idea I had was to make a double-decker tool thing, but that just didn't work out. And then I made the, the little trays on the bottom, and, you know, I just don't like them. So then all of a sudden it dawned on me that, you know, I'm trying to accomplish something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off right here and zap right there. Get that all squared up, put my lazy susan on the bottom of this, and mount it to this table so my tools will be right here they'll be right here nice and handy easy to select and solves my problem so let's get on with it all right here you go wasn't a total waste uh, i think this turned out really nice i can see i can look down here and see which one i'm on easy to get easy to put back Right here, nice and handy. I only had one lazy scissors. I didn't waste the other part either. I only had, you know, just things that you, you generally misplace, like, you know, keys to chucks and, and these step drills and, you know, awls and stuff like that. And, you know, a pair of pliers I use all the time. And here's a couple of Jacob's chucks. So, you know, these are really handy. And these will stay on the other bench over there. I'll get me another Lazy Susan and put on the bottom of that. And uh, I may put it here, but I'm thinking it'll be over here. So that's it, my friends. Anyway, there you go, my friends. If you like what I do, please subscribe. Maybe the next time I'll be able to be going, going to town and back or whatever. But that, that was sort of fun, in a way. And it was pretty tiresome turning that big old log. But the big boy here I handle it. It didn't ever stall one time. Alright. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Call your mama. Keep them whirling. Catch you on the rebound.